Hey everybody, welcome to whatever I decide to call this show. Today we're going to be taking a look at how to make fried chicken. We got a camera up here, we got a camera there, and we got this sweet shirt on. So, why don't we take a look at it? I have been trying to figure out the best recipe for fried chicken for months now. Heavy research. Hey, what's up guys? Welcome back to Binging with Babish, where this week I'm very excited to announce that the official- It's not just stealing, it's a homage. Now the hallmark of any good fried chicken is its crust, so for that reason we're going to be breading all our chicken at the same time. So to a large baking tray you're going to deposit 2 cups of flour, a tablespoon of salt, paprika, cayenne, ginger- ginger- mmm. Sometimes it doesn't want to come out, just keep shaking it. Ginger, half a tablespoon of rosemary just to be freaky, a tablespoon of oregano, basil, onion powder, garlic powder, thyme, and freshly ground black pepper. Why or whisk all of this together to combine, but if you're feeling extra freaky, what are your hands if not giant fleshy whisks? So once it's combined, go ahead and clean off your knife and your counter, pick up your knife again, realize you have no reason to have it out, put it away, and then through the magic of editing, take out your chicken that has been sitting overnight in buttermilk. But Jeff, I don't actually hear you crying because this is a YouTube video that I'm recording in advance. I don't have buttermilk. Well, that is easily remedied. All you have to do is add a tablespoon of vinegar to every cup of milk that you want to transfer transform into delicious, delicious buttermilk, and then bingo bango buttermilk in which to deposit your chicken. With all that out of the way, you're gonna add a couple tablespoons of the buttermilk directly into the flour mixture. Give it a little mix with the wire whisk here, not your fleshy meat whisk. And then you're going to bread all the chicken at the same time. What that's gonna do is create nice little deliciously seasoned, extra crunchy crust bits. Once your chicken's thoroughly coated in the mixture, allow it to sit for about 10 minutes at room temperature before bringing it over to your stove in which you are going to place it in its bath of 350 degree Fahrenheit oil. I chose to use a blend of canola and peanut, but you do you as long as it has a high enough flash point. You'll notice here my oil is a little bit dirtier. It's because I made this exact same recipe yesterday as a test and that's what it turned the oil into. As a result, my chicken's gonna be a little darker. That does not make it less delicious, however, just a little less appealing to the eye. Yours, if you're using fresh oil, will come out a nice golden brown. So to properly cook this chicken, you're going to put it in and leave it alone for about six minutes, give it a flip, and then take it out after a further six minutes or when the internal temperature reaches 165 degrees for white meat or 175 degrees for the dark meat. Place them on a wire rack and into a hot oven until you're completely done frying. Give yourself a little congratulatory thumbs up for all the hard work you've just put in. Now you can bring the chicken on over to the counter for you to admire. Move it around a little bit for no reason. Be sure to wipe your hands off on your t-shirt like the monster you are. Yes, this is a required step when making fried chicken. And just take a look at the beautiful, beautiful chicken you've created. And now it's time for the all-important taste test. Take a big old bite, take a second to admire all the juices that run out every time you inappropriately shake your drumstick, and then maybe take another bite because it's delicious. At this point, you are free to take your chicken into another room off camera to do unspeakable things to it. 